Hey guys, welcome back to Mr. Phone. My name is Porush and today we are going to talk about the new Vivo V20 Pro 5G. This phone is priced at 29,990 rupees and it is available for sale on Amazon, Flipkart, Vivo.com and at online retail stores. So in this video, let's talk about the smartphone in detail and let's tell you whether you should spend 29,990 or this device or not. So do watch this video till the end and if you are new to this channel then consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you stay updated with everything that we do or Mr. Phone. Starting with the design, the V20 Pro looks a lot like the V20. You get the same frosted glass finish at the back which looks really nice. The rear side of the V20 Pro is protected by Gorilla Glass 5. While we were enjoying the sunset melody color of the V20, we were curious to check out the Midnight Jazz variant as well. With the V20 Pro, we got the chance to experience the Midnight Jazz color and it looks very classy. The device weighs just 170 grams and is just 7.3 millimeters thick which makes it very comfortable to hold. Plus, it's ergonomic enough for single-handed usage. Talking about physical overview, at the bottom you get the USB 2.0 Type-C port, speaker grill, primary microphone and the SIM tray. At the top you have the secondary noise cancellation mic. On the right side you have the power button and the volume rockers which offer tactile feedback. The fingerprint sensor has been placed under the display and it works flawlessly every time. The face unlocking is also pretty quick but it works even while wearing a mask, so it's tough to comment about its security. Overall, the Vivo V20 Pro 5G comes with a polished and refined design that offers great look and feel. The best part about having a matte finish device is protection from fingerprints and smudges. If you are a fan of the glossy glass design, you can go with the OnePlus Nord. The Vivo V20 Pro comes with a 6.44 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display with 20 to 9 aspect ratio and 60 Hz refresh rate. It's a good AMOLED panel offering rich colors and deep blacks. The 408 ppi pixel density takes care of providing a crisp visual experience. You also get the Widevine L1 certification on board that lets you enjoy your favorite content at OTT platforms in high resolution. You can also watch HDR videos but only on YouTube. The sunlight legibility is decent for outdoor situations. The display gets really dim outdoors. It is protected by Vivo's own short sensation glass. So we hope that it is as effective as Corning's Gorilla Glass. There is a screen protector that comes pre-installed with the device. The V20 Pro comes with a single speaker setup and it provides good audio output for an indoor listening experience. The vocals and the dialogues were very clear while listening to music and binge watching our favorite shows. But for outdoors, there were some instances when we were not able to hear even the ringtone, especially while being at crowded areas. You get a USB Type-C 3.5mm dongle in the box for using your earphones. Thanks to the Hi-Res audio certification, the audio listening experience was good and you also get the option to customize the music playback in the settings menu. For wireless earphones, you get AAC audio codec support. In terms of call quality, we have no complaints. The earpiece is loud and clear while taking calls. This is a 5G smartphone which supports sub 6GHz 5G network. You also get dual 4G dual VOLT, dual Wi-Fi calling, native video calls and call recorder. For wireless audio, you get Bluetooth 5.1 support and for wireless networks, you get 5GHz Wi-Fi support as well. For performance, the device runs on the Snapdragon 765G processor. There is 8GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 128GB of UFS 2.1 storage. You don't get the option to expand the internal storage via a microSD card. And there is just one RAM and storage variant. But I think that 128GB storage should be enough for most of the users. Anyway, the day-to-day -day performance on this smartphone is really nice. We were able to use multiple apps without facing any lags. The RAM management is solid on this device. It's safe to say that the V20 Pro is a good option for both heavy and light users. In terms of gaming, you get the option to play games like Call of Duty at very high graphics, very high frame rates 
and at high graphics max frame rates. We had a good gameplay experience on this device with no signs of stutters and frame drops. There is one thing that left us disappointed and that was the haptic feedback on the V20 Pro. It actually felt like we were using a budget smartphone that costs less than 15,000 rupees. OnePlus Nord has a much superior haptic motor inside. Vivo has worked a lot on improving the software experience. OnePlus OS 11 is a result of that commitment. Gone are the days when Vivo's UI used to feel bloated and stale in front of the competition. OnePlus OS 11 brings a more stock-like user experience. The device comes with Android 10 out of the box, but just like the company promised, we received the update for Android 11 with December security patch in the next week itself. We have no complaints with this new UI. It's smooth, lag-free and has been optimized very well for this device. You get a lot of different customization options in the setting menu. And there are of course the native Android 11 features like chat bubbles, conversation priority, media controls in the settings menu and much more. The biggest relief with this upgraded UI is the absolute absence of ads, which is great. Overall, we found it satisfying. But have you guys heard about Origin OS? Well, we would like Vivo to introduce that on its existing phones. Plus, the Vivo X60 series was recently launched in China with Origin OS. Now guys, let's talk about the camera, which is the major highlight of this phone. The Vivo V20 Pro comes with a 64 megapixel triple rear camera setup. The 64 megapixel lens comes with a Samsung GW1 sensor, which has f1.9 aperture. Next, it has the 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens with 120 degree field of view. Lastly, there is a mono lens with 2 megapixel resolution. For selfies, you get a 44 megapixel plus 8 megapixel dual selfie camera unit. The 44 megapixel lens supports eye autofocus both in daylight and low light. You can shoot 4K videos from both the front and rear cameras. You can also shoot 1080p videos from the ultra wide angle lens. Now let's talk about the image quality and show you some video samples. Starting with the daylight shots, we were very impressed with the color reproduction. Each and every color of the swings has been captured accurately by the primary sensor. The color of the sky and the buildings is also spot on. But we cannot say the same for the level of sharpness. After 100% crop, you will notice that the text on this board is not readable and the corner sharpness is also not impressive. After switching on the 64 megapixel mode, we did notice a slight improvement in the level of sharpness and details. But now there is an issue of color disparity. The color of the sky is now looking a little saturated. But apart from that, the color reproduction is accurate in this image. The ultra wide angle images look decent at best. The sharpness and details are not very impressive and the colors also do not look true to source. Once you switch on the HDR mode, you will notice that the highlights have been controlled nicely but the color of the sky looks a little saturated. The details from the dark areas on the left side have also been improved a bit with the HDR mode. The background separation looks clean while shooting portrait shots from the rear camera. The color reproduction is once again very accurate. Plus, you can also control the level of bokeh before and after clicking the image. Vivo seems to have focused on ensuring color accuracy in every scenario. This close-up shot looks really impressive. The red color of the flower has not been blotched at all. The texture of the petals looks really nice. There is good level of sharpness as well. The default background blur looks very natural. It's just that there is a slight focusing issue at the center of the flower. Otherwise, for the most part, this result looks good. The 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens lets you shoot macro images as well. The focal length goes up to 2.5 centimeters and the colors look a little saturated, but the sharpness and details are nice. Talking about indoor shots, the primary camera does a good job in terms of maintaining equal amount of exposure for every part of the image. The colors look true to source and the level of sharpness is also good. Coming to the low light scenario, you will notice the amount of light flaring actually increases after switching on the night mode. There is an improvement in terms of exposure, but upon closer inspection, you will notice that the light sources look very distorted after switching on the night mode. Same goes for this second image. You can clearly notice the light flaring issue after turning on the night mode. I think even if you switch off the night mode, you will still get a good result with decent level of sharpness and details. Talking about selfies, there is something weird that we noticed while using the front facing camera. The primary 44 megapixel lens should by default click 11 megapixel selfies 
because there is a dedicated 44 megapixel mode for shooting high res images. But even after switching off the 44 megapixel mode, you still get 40 megapixel selfies, which look very sharp. So technically, there is no point of giving a separate 44 megapixel mode. Anyways, the 40 megapixel selfies look great with accurate skin tones and good level of facial details. We did not notice any kind of color disparity after switching on the portrait selfie mode. The cutout is very accurate with almost no room for inconsistencies. And once again, the facial tones and facial details look really impressive. The color of my jacket and my t-shirt look true to source in both the situations. You can shoot 8 megapixel ultra wide selfies with 105 degrees field of view. The details are not satisfactory, but the skin tones and overall color reproduction looks true to source. The indoor selfies have good level of facial details and the facial tones are also accurately captured. But the colors of my clothes and the wall behind me have been captured in a lighter shade. The low light selfies in outdoors look really nice. But for indoor selfies, it's better to turn on the screen light feature to get much better results. Lastly, you can judge the quality of low light selfies by looking at this image. I don't think I have to say a lot about this image. Finally, let's talk about the 4000 mAh battery that powers this device. This battery can easily last for an entire day for regular users. We charge this device till 100% in the morning at 9am. After an extensive usage involving calls, video calls, social media usage, 30 minutes of COD and multitasking, the V20 Pro was easily able to last till 8pm in the evening. This is a pretty good battery performance as per my opinion. The 33W flash charge 2.0 charger in the box can charge this smartphone from 0 to 100% in an hour. That's a good charging speed. Now if you wish to game a lot on the smartphone, you will surely end up using the charger twice during the day. So keep that in mind. So that's it guys, this is everything that you need to know about the Vivo V20 Pro. Uh, I'll just say that if you want a device that comes with that glossy glass design, if you want a device that comes with a 90Hz refresh rate display and if you want better haptic feedback on your smartphone, then you should definitely go with the OnePlus Nord. But if you like this matte frosted finish design and if you want a good set of cameras which do give good results then you should definitely go with the Vivo V20 Pro. And also uh, the battery life is almost the same on both the devices. Both the devices come with 30 watt charging as in 33 watt to be precise, but I don't think that will be much of a difference. So let us know in the comments what you think about this device and we will be back soon with another video. Till then, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share this video and we will be back soon with more such tech content on Mr. Phone. Stay subscribed, stay safe, goodbye and happy new year.